The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth. And I'm here today with my co-host, Charlene Hess. Welcome to the show, Charlene. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here, Cornelia. Oh, my gosh. Can you believe that we are six months uh, into 2018? Where did the time go? It's incredible. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's just amazing how 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 fast it's gone by, and it just feels like um, the the schedule that we've been up, trying to upkeep is not yes. doable anymore. <laughs> and it's like you know, it's feeling like oh my gosh, you know, we have to let go of more and more and more, more yes. and more and more. It's like. Uh, trying to upkeep the schedule, the same momentum, the way, no, we, we, it just, it's just not possible. So um, that's part of the, um, the wave that we're riding is learning how to find new ways of doing things, new ways of communicating, new ways of living, new ways of being. And, you know, you have taken us through this amazing theme in the last five shows. I think today's the mm-hmm. fifth show. And you've shown us um, how to really quiet the mind, how to, um, you know, develop a a deeper connection so that we can come into true alignment with our inner calling. And it's been a process. And so I want to be able to uh, guide the listeners that are listening today, if you're just listening for the first time, to go back to... Go to, go to your website at charlenehess.com and under radio, um, you'll be able to find the last five shows or last four shows we've done on the, the segments and topics that we're talking about. And that's really discovering your purpose, your calling, and quieting your mind and developing a stronger inner connection with your show. And you can also find those shows on the website at corneliastephanie.com. Because really, truly, right now, you know, we're here on earth to live our highest vision, our highest, most truest vision. And um, in order to be able to do that, we have to be able to have the tools to live our highest self, to discover our calling, to live our purpose, and um, unveil our true, authentic self. Mm-hmm. And my goodness, I can't imagine doing this path without doing the inner work. And that's mm-hmm. that's why we're here. That's why I created this show. That's why I created the tools that I've created in 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 um, it, on my foundation and with the people that I support and I empower and uh, to assist everybody to make the process a little bit easier because, you know, going through the dark night of the soul, my mm-hmm. goodness, it's it's like, you know, even like right now, you know, I consider myself in mastery. I I I know that I'm a master and I I've got this down and I created these tools, but I tell you what, that's a fine line and learning how to walk that fine line will still have you on your knees. Mhm. It'll still have you asking calling for a Jesus meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it'll still have you uh, calling for a witness. It'll still have you asking for a miracle. Um, but with the tools, it's really, um, it makes it so much easier, doesn't it? Yes. Having tools is really important. You know, yeah. it's thinking about what you were saying earlier that about how quickly the time has gone. And I'm realizing that things are moving so quickly all the time. And I remember my dad telling me one time when I you know, first had children, he said, you know, every year time goes by faster and the 
days that seem to be shorter and then you have children and it goes into hyperspeed and it doubles. And it's so true. And the truth is, is that time isn't going to slow down. Time is an illusion, right? Time is exactly, we have exactly the same amount of time in every single day. And the thing that I have been becoming more and more aware of and practicing more and more in my life is realizing that the thing that's going to slow time down is if we can actually control time. But the thing that makes us feel like it's slower is by being really present in every moment. It's often when things are, when this time seems to go quickly, it's usually because we are either in the future or in the past and we've missed the present moment. And so that's the thing that I've been really practicing is trying to really work at being right where I'm at in every single moment, putting all of my attention, bringing in all of my senses to say, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm experiencing in this very moment and trying not to, um, as my friend Katie always puts, future trip trying not to future trip onto the next thing and have my mind somewhere else. And I find that it is really helpful. And, you know, that's part of what this, you know, seven step process that I've been working on and developing and been sharing with, um, with all of you is it's about taking that time to get still and to be present. And that is, that is really the key being actively engaged in your life. That is the key to living with purpose, to living in intention is being absolutely in the present moment at all times. Yes. And I mean, you know, the present moment is where all the healing happens. It's mm -hmm. in the now. It's, it's always in the now. And part of our awakening um, points to that we're multidimensional beings and in our multidimensional beingness, we're in, in, in different dimensions um, uh, at, at, at different times. And mm -hmm. so, um, we can, we can fully be present with being in different dimensions at different times, all in the now, because we're so amazing and we're so capable and we're so able. Um, part of what we're going to talk about today is, is trusting and shining the light and, and being mm -hmm. able to move into our true alignment and, and, and who it is that we really are. And when we're moving in, into our right alignment, then, then we can um, continue on shining our light. But it's also shining our light when we're not feeling too bright. Yes. That is also yes. part of the process, right? And, and in order to be able to do that, we have to be able to trust ourselves in the now. Absolutely. And the, the first part of what I want to share with everyone today is the uh, fourth step uh, fifth step. Yeah. The fourth step in this seven step process is about trusting your inner self. And so in the previous shows, I had talked about, um, becoming the observer when you're in your meditation. And we had talked last time a little bit about when you listen to all of the different voices in your head and you get to know each one of these different aspects of yourself, all of the different parts of you that are talking, learning who's running the show, and getting clear on that. And then we find that usually there is one aspect of ourself or another that seems to always be the dominant part of ourselves. And that's the part of our ego that we've just are really comfortable in. It's the way that we are showing up in the world. It's the way that we want other people to see us. It's the way that we want to interact with the world from our protected egoic place. And Part of doing this meditation process of taking time to really sit and be with yourself, to be the observer and to give that observer part of yourself um, the, the platform to be able to really look at, identify all these different aspects of yourself, then you're able to start seeing these deeper inner parts of yourself and giving the ego a chance to sort of settle down and come down and soften back, to just really soften back and to trust this other part of yourself that isn't so pre prevalent, the one that isn't talking all the time, the one that isn't showing up. It's the one that you're constantly protecting. It's the one that we keep pulled back for fear of rejection, for fear of being seen, for fear of being judged, for fear of being wrong. All of these fears that we have that hold us back from us being this inner quiet part of ourselves, our essence of who we truly want to be, of how we really want to show up. 
is that part that gets hidden. And so part of what I talk about in this, this step of the process of trust your inner self, it's about learning to give space to the more quiet inner voice and learn to live from there. So as we get to that place where we are aware that our ego or these different parts of ourselves that are the dominant protective ones, to give that part an opportunity to settle back and give this inner part of ourselves to stand up, to show up. And that takes a lot of trust, Cornelia. It takes so much self-trust to be able to show up completely vulnerable to show up in that part of yourself to say, I'm not going to hide behind my ego anymore. I'm just going to allow this aspect of who I am that's crying to come out to step up and to take the show, to step up and to lead the way. And that's what I talk about, about learning how to trust yourself, that it's okay to have this part of yourself show up and to actively be in your life. And I know it's a really, really hard thing for so many of us to do because it's really scary. It's really scary sometimes to let that part of ourselves be seen. So, so very well put. And we're going to go, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, I want to tell you a, a quick story that triggered, um, my, um, remembrance when, um, when I um, began working with my spirit and my ego together, and and how and how I um, how I did it, and awesome. so um, we'll, we're going to take a break. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm with Empowerment Coach Charlene Hess. We'll be right back. So before we went to break, what we were talking about is, you know, quieting the ego. And this triggered a story for me when I first began um, the process and switch to where uh, spirit was leading because, you know, all our lives, you know, our ego has kept us safe and has kept us, you know, protected. Mm -hmm. And when I was, um, I think that was back in, in 2010, um, or maybe even 2009, something like that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm taking these huge steps in my life and, um, I would sit down and I would talk to my ego and I would say, okay, listen, you're going to have to learn to trust me now. And, <laughs> and, and will you allow me, you mm -hmm. know, without screaming in my ear, will you give me, will you allow me to make some choices from the heart? And will you allow me to, um, to show you that it's really all going to be okay. Um, but, but we're switching roles because I'm, I'm mm -hmm. moving in a different direction and I know you're frightened and I know you're scared and I don't want you to be, but I can't have you screaming in my ear every two <laughs> seconds while I'm trying to, while I'm trying to do this. So can we work together for like the next 30 days? And will you please allow me to, you know, uh, without screaming in my ear. And so I, we, I would work with my ego in like 30 day increments in order to not have the temper <laughs> tantrums. And, um, but that's how I began loving my ego free. And yes. it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a tough process because like you said, that noise, that noise is so loud and the mm -hmm. ego is so afraid. Yes. Yes. And you know, the thing is, is that a lot of times people talk about wanting to get rid of the ego. And we don't, we don't want to get rid of the ego. Our ego is a very important part of ourselves. The ego doesn't have to be the one that's running the show. So learning to let your heart lead. And one of the sort of the, the second to biggest pinnacle of the work that I am doing and I'm sharing is to talk about what does it mean to be in alignment. And that's kind of what you were just now talking about, Cornelia, where you're able to have this conversation and go, okay, ego, I can't have you screaming in my ear because I'm going to be, you know, leading from my heart. I, you got to trust me that I've got this. And that's what it means to walk into alignment. And so, you know, what does that even mean? People hear that word, you know, alignment. What does it mean to be in alignment? And so my understanding or my definition, the way that I explain what that means is when you have all aspects of yourself working together. 
So when your critic is present, but working with your taskmaster is present and working with your heart is present and working with your protector or the protective part of your ego, when all of these different aspects of yourself, so in the previous step, um, step three and step four of where you're learning to hold space for yourself and you're learning to get to know the monkeys, right, that, that we had talked about earlier, getting to know the monkeys is learning all the different voices in your head, all the different aspects of yourself. And then when you make a decision, when you walk through your life, when you're moving forward in your calling, everybody is on board. And the way that that happens is by giving everybody space, giving room for every aspect of yourself to be fully present. And so when you are really happy and in this really um, excited place and this part of you comes in and says, oh no, don't, don't get too excited because you know these other things are going on over here and you have to be a little bit cautious to be able to go, okay, I hear that I'm going to be cautious, but at the same time, I'm going to continue to be happy. So I'm not going to ignore you, my cautious voice. I'm not going to say, oh, you're not allowed here. We're only going to be happy. We're only going to be moving in this uh, feeling or in this space, but say, no, you're welcome to come here too. And for the critic to be invited into the decision-making process as well. And it's about having that balance. All the different parts of yourself are present all of the different parts of yourself are listened to, are heard, are welcome, and they're all part of making that decision together. And when you do that, that's what it means to be in alignment with yourself. And you know that that's when you've found that ultimate place of peace because there's no longer an internal conflict. Absolutely. That's so brilliant. So Charlene, you're offering um, coaching to people. Tell yes. us about that and tell yes. us, tell us about the benefits that people are going to get from working with you. What are the benefits and what you're offering? So what I, so the free gift that I'm offering today, and I should probably mention that early in the show because I am offering a one hour free life coaching session to two people. So two people that call in or no, I'm sorry, you can, I guess you could call in because you did provide the number or you can just email me at livinghole at charlenehess.com or livinghole at charlenehess.com and I will take the first two emails that I get and I'm going to offer you a free one hour coaching session. And what I do in that coaching session is I take you through a very um, abbreviated version of going through these seven steps of this is what it means and this is how you in your life can learn how to find that inner peace, how you can learn to have joy, how you can learn to stop having internal conflict where you are struggling and just continuously being at a loss. And it's it takes time. It's not going to happen in one session, but your first session is definitely free. And it just gives you an opportunity to get some tools to be able to carry with you to know that all parts of yourself are completely beneficial, are welcome, and are part of what make you the amazingness that you are, and to learn how to own that and learn how to believe that and see that truth to be able to walk into that so that you can live in alignment within yourself. That's beautiful. So what was it exactly, Charlene, that that, that made you develop this this whole series because when you know you were already you know on your path and you were already on the journey and then you decided that this is the piece that you wanted to bring to the world this is the piece that you mm -hmm. wanted to offer to people for support and help and what is it that that made you develop this uh and and offered it to people what what, what was the purpose behind that I think for me um, as I've been doing the work, it's because I've been working with you for a long time and I've been going through and doing this transformational work, I think my whole life, you know, it's part of being, you know, the Scorpio energy of constantly in deep transformation. And I, everything that I learn, I believe is for me to teach. And I think that's the truth for all of us. Everything that anybody learns, anytime you learn something, 
you get to turn around and teach it to somebody else. That's how we have the wisdom and knowledge today that we have accumulated from our ancestors from years and years and years ago. And so as I began to experience this and explore this, and as I began to sit in meditation for long periods of time, I learned to get still within myself. This is the process that came up. It came to me and it was this, this overwhelming feeling of, I think I've figured out a way. I think I've figured out a formula that if you do these steps in this way, then it's going to be a way for people to more quickly come to that place of being in alignment. Because for me, it has taken a very long time. I've tried so many different things. And as I go out there and I learn about this and bring it in and learn about that and bring it in, it's been a very long sort of convoluted journey, but it's been my journey and it's absolutely perfect. And I found that I wanted to create a more succinct way that I could help people to come to this place of discovering their calling. What a beautiful, um, what a beautiful opportunity for people to discover their calling through this process, to really get inner quiet, to get mm. quiet and to uh, sit with themselves and learn how to uh, just take the steps and that it doesn't have to take a long time or years and years of work and practice because it's already, it's already, it already exists and it's already there and it's, it can happen if any person that is willing to really, like you said, move into alignment, learn how to um, quiet the mind and, and receive the, the seven steps that you put together for, um, for all of us here. So mm -hmm. tell us again about how to um, get, get, um, get more information on that. So you can reach me through my website, charlenehess.com, um, or email me at livingwhole at charlenehess.com. And Charlene is spelled with two E's together at the end. So C-H-A-R-L-E-E-N. Uh, you'll be easier to find me if you spell it uh, properly. And you can also go to my Facebook page. I'm on my Facebook and I'm off my Facebook. I'm not a super big social media person. Um, but I do have a lot of information and content there. I do have a YouTube channel, a Charlene Hess, and you can find more information. But really the best way is to reach out to me directly at livingwhole at charlenehess.com. And I can um, give you all the information. I have a lot of free videos on my YouTube channel and through my website that I'm offering people both in um, fitness, learning to connect with yourself physically, as well as a lot of um, just sort of video blog inspirational information. As I learn a tool, I teach it. That's it. That's it. And that's part of the role of, uh, you know, like you said earlier, it's we're, we're all learning new things. We're all learning new ways of, of being. And then it's it's our, our job to teach it to other people, uh, whether it is uh, through speaking and creating prod, prod, products or through uh, showing the way. Because yes. sometimes it's just by modeling and, and, a, and a way of living and by who it is that you're being, um, that also is a way to teach. And so um, right now, I know that there's a lot of people out there that are just having so many challenges. And both Charlene and I, we've gone through um, horrific experiences in our lives. There's lots of things that we both have had, had to overcome. Charlene was the, the 14th child and 13th, um, 13th child. Mm -hmm. And, um, there's, you know, and being the 13th child and then, um, being married, being married to, uh, uh, a husband for how many years were you married? And then that's 19 years, 19 years. And that was, that ended, um, you know, and that, uh, uh, opened up a whole new journey for you. Mm -hmm. And, um, now you're in living in emptiness syndrome, like yes. I hear to talk about, and you're just beginning a whole new way. And so, yes. um, you know, and the, what I've overcome is, is I, um, was a suicidal soul and I was a drug addict and I had, um, I had so much pain as an empath that I, that I had to overcome to really learn how to give birth to myself and, um, be here, be here in this new way. Because part of my mm -hmm. journey was I always wanted to see if I could fit into the old world and realizing then that, hey, we were never born to fit in. We were born to create a new earth. We were born yes. to create a new one. And oh, that yeah. is certainly from 
our conditioning from the past because obviously that that's not working. And, you know, what is it? You can't put a round peg in a square hole. What is that? A square what peg is that? in a round hole. Yeah, you can't. Either way. You know, you can't do either one, <laughs> you know, and so it's like, you know, it's pointless. So, and, and here we are raising the consciousness and we're busting through programs and, um, you know, it, you would do yourself a really good service if you wanted to contact Charlene and take her up on her amazing offer today. So we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Hello, my name is Charlene Hess, and I want to share with you my wonderful experience of choosing to use Cornelia Stephanie as my life coach. My life is so different now from where it was when I began working with her in 2011. At that time, I was in a dysfunctional marriage. I had my own business. I was raising two children and completely dead inside. After working with Cornelia, I began to gain confidence. I began to learn and understand how to use my emotions in my life. I learned how to process the emotions that were stored in my body, the ones that I thought that I had already worked through in my 12 years of counseling prior to working with her. The process that she had taken me through of using my emotions to heal my life, to use my anger to find peace was absolutely incredible. I have been working with her one-on-one uh, -on -one for many years now and even though I am in a place now where I am thriving in my life I still refer to Cornelia as my coach and I still work with her on an ongoing basis where we're always checking in and keeping me accountable in my growth after working with her for many years I decided to go through her wholeness certification coach uh, coaching program and it has absolutely been an amazing process I now am a certified empowerment coach and I got certified through her program and I am taking clients and helping them to find the empowerment in their lives. One of the things that I love about Cornelia is that she taught me that I am the authority in my own life. And that was a really difficult experience to go through because it was really fighting against all of the dogma and programming that was so ingrained in my brain that all of the authority is outside of me. But as I began to understand and believe and adopt and know the truth that I am the authority in my life is when everything in my life started to shift and change. I became responsible for my decisions. I became responsible for creating a life that I love. And now I'm here in this amazing, beautiful place, living a life of so much happiness and joy. And no matter what life throws at me, I have the tools to be able to approach everything from a place of empowerment. And now I have the ability to help other people do the same. So working with Cornelia has absolutely been the best decision that I've ever made in my life. It has taken me from a life of absolute misery and given me the tools to be able to have a life of absolute complete joy. So I cannot recommend working with her enough. I hope that you decide to choose to have her as your coach. Go through her empowerment coaching program, go through her wholeness certification, and I guarantee you won't regret it. Welcome back. You are listening to The Cornelia Stephanie Show, and I'm Charlene Hess, and I am sharing with you the seven-step process of living on purpose, discover your calling, and shine your light. And so before we went to break, we were talking about um, being able to have your self all parts of yourself fully present and walking in alignment, learning to trust yourself, learning to walk into alignment and getting to that place where you are stepping into your calling. So that is something that is uh, a very loaded subject because I've heard a lot of people share with me about, I don't know what my calling is. What is my purpose? What am I here to do? And it can feel like a lot of pressure when say, I'm going to discover my calling so that I can shine my light and share my gift. You know, those are my taglines is, you know, and so let's talk about what does that mean? So to discover your calling, a lot of people will put that meaning into what is it that you're going to do for your work or your career, or I've come here and I feel this need that I have to, you know, do something that's going to change the world. Like you were talking about earlier, Cornelia, about, you know, we came here to create a new earth. We didn't come here to fit in. We came here to create a new earth. And so what does that mean? How do you do that? That can feel like a lot of pressure okay, well, what am I supposed to do? And the beauty, the beauty, the beauty of what this is really about is that 
you are your calling. That's it. You, in your authenticity, showing up, all aspects of yourself, fully present, fully integrated, coming to that place to where you truly love and accept yourself how you are, where you stop hiding behind all of the programming, where you stop hiding behind all the limiting beliefs and projections that have been put on you from your childhood and from society. When you stop hiding that beautiful essence of who you are inside, of how you feel, how you interact with the world, how you process everything that comes in, when you allow yourself to just fully show up raw, vulnerable, real, present, and in the moment, you're living your calling. That's it. If you do that, you're going to change the world. Because as you do that, then you're giving everyone else permission to do exactly the same. And that's really what all of us want. We all want permission to be who we are, to be loved, to feel seen, to feel met, to feel like we can just say what it is that we want to say or do the thing that we want to do without this external pressure and judgment on us. And so that external pressure and that judgment is coming from yourself. So the beauty is you have the power to let it go. That's it. I say it as though it's a simple overnight process, which (laughs) unfortunately it's not because depending on how attached you are to your story, to the story that you created coming here is going to determine how easily you'll be able to release and let it go to start writing the script of your new story on an ongoing moment by moment basis. And, you know, Cornelia, it's just really that simple. Um, Not easy, simple. There's a difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I also even want to say, um, um, when you say not easy, again, because, again, it takes courage and it, mm-hmm. takes, it takes bravery. And it, uh, it really takes, you know, courage, bravery to be able to say, I, I'm, I really am willing to be my authentic self. I really am willing to, I'm willing. And it doesn't, it really doesn't have to be hard. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be. It's like, um, it can be easy. Is it painful? Yeah, it can be painful. Definitely depending on where you're at and how much luggage and, and how much baggage you still have to let go. And wherever you are, that's the whole point. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's okay. And I think the the number one thing that you said is um, the approval. You know, when you're looking, um, seeking the approval from from an outside source, in the moment you can always seek the approval. Put it right back to you. When you're yes. projecting the energy out onto somebody. Will you approve of me? Will you see me? Will you recognize yes. me? Will you hear me? And if you can take that energy and bring it back to you and going. Cornelia, I see you, I recognize you, I hear you, I love you, and that's all that matters. That is enough. That is enough. And when we can realize that that is enough, then it's like, oh, my God. And, you know, and then do that every now moment because there's going to be other times yes. that come up again, right? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, I want to share an experience that I had um, recently where – as I have been going through this place, and like you said, we have to do this at a moment to moment basis. And I want to share an example of that. And so I have been doing this inner work for a very long time. And I have a deep knowing that I am enough. I have a deep knowing that I walk in alignment. And so when I make a decision to do something, I know that I have spent hours upon hundreds of hours emotionally, physically processing and making sure that everybody's on board before I make a big decision. And so I just made a really big decision. And I know that in my heart, it is coming from an absolute pure place. And I know what I'm doing and I know where I'm going. And for onlookers looking on, they can judge me. And that recently happened to me where I was judged so harshly by people that I thought loved me, by people that I thought were my friends, by people that I thought 
were on my side where I got under full blown attack. I mean, attacked hard. And it really took me back for a moment to go, whoa, I had to recheck in with myself. Is there anything in me that what this attack of what these people are saying true? Is there any truth to any bit of it? And so as I went through and I went and looked at all of those different aspects, it became very clear to me that a lot of the things that were said specifically with one of the people that was attacking me, I didn't even have the need to defend myself because it was so obvious that it was a projection of where they're at. It was a projection of how they feel about themselves that I didn't need to defend myself. I didn't need to even address any of the things that were said because it wasn't, it wasn't even about me. It wasn't relevant. And so I was able to hold up a mirror for that person and say, let me hold up this mirror for you and let you see that you're projecting onto me how you're feeling about yourself. And when you start walking and making big decisions and changing, and when you start walking in confidence and you start showing up in that way, people can often feel threatened. And when they feel threatened, they may attack. And so when those situations and those circumstances happen, it's so important to be so grounded inside yourself, to know in your heart that what you're doing is exactly in alignment with who you are. And it's not about getting the approval of anybody else. It is not about getting that, that stamp of, am I okay? Am I okay doing what I'm doing? Now, mind you, the emotions still come up. Uh, let me tell you, I had some good cry sessions as I was feeling that attack because it brought up emotions that I had still left inside of me that needed to be released so that I could release those emotions and come back to my truth. So although I was in that, like I, I had a, a really deep, like dark night of the soul experience last night, even where I just had that moment of just sitting on the floor and sobbing and just releasing the last little bits of the old story that wants to hang on the last little bit of that lie that wants so desperately to tell me that I'm making a bad decision, that I'm not worthy, that I'm not good enough, that I'm not wanted, which is a really big piece for me is you're not wanted. As the 13th child, um, you definitely get some messages that you're, you're an inconvenience, that you're not wanted, that you're not important, that we don't have time for you. We don't have time to listen to you. And so those feelings will come up to be released. Although I don't have that belief anymore there is that, that inside trigger where it comes up. And the beauty is, is you get to sit and you get to cry and you get to release it and you get to let it go and you get to move forward and come back to your knowing that, yeah, it's all good. And, and I am worthy and I am enough. And all of those core wounds have been healed and here I am and I'm going to keep walking forward and I'm going to keep staying in alignment because I'm living my calling and I'm shining my light. How? By showing up in my authenticity, in my vulnerability, real, raw, honest, you know, that gritty, this is who I am and this is where I'm at and I'm showing up anyway and I don't need your approval, but you can come along with me. <laughs> and that's gumption. That's gumption. Gumption, yeah. gumption, gumption. We're going to be right back. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. One of the things that I wanted to touch on before we went to break was um, when Charlene was talking about, you know, how she was um, under attack and by people that she cared about and people that she loved. And when we're living in the new earth and when we're living in our alignment and when we're living in our true value and our true worth, that's nothing that needs to be defended because we already know on, on, an, on an inner level, on a true level, that every ounce of of our worth has been integrated and has been um, embodied, and that does not need to be defended. And um, you know, some people they feel threatened by that light, and and that's 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 a tough call. But the the courage to be you and to continue on shining that light and examine what your motivations are, what your choices are, what your um, 
what your intentions are. Like, like Charlene was saying, she, she had to look at, was any of that true? And mm -hmm. that's because, you know, we are, um, the truth seekers, we're here to live in truth. And in order to do this inner work, you really have to discover what's true for you. And that's the bottom line, right, Charlene? Absolutely. And you said it there, what is true for you? I do not believe that there is a universal uh, truth in that there's a certain way that everybody is going to come to the same conclusion of this is true for you. Because the, the way that that comes across is individual for everybody. And so we all, you know, I think, I believe that we're all born with a sense of morality inside of us and that we know the sense of right and wrong in how we interact as far as hurting other people. And I do believe that there is a universal truth and universal consciousness that we all can tap into, but that's something that lives inside of us. And then we get to decide how we express that into the world. Yeah. That is us living our truth. That is us shining our light. And so to shine your light and share your gift, you have to be so integrated into yourself and believe so strongly in yourself that who you are and what you are here to represent and how you are representing yourself is so clear that when you shine your light, you really do become unstoppable. Because although shining your light may intimidate some people and that they may want to attack you, and that's only because they haven't learned how to shine their own light. They're creating a judgment against you because of their belief about themselves. And yeah. so if you in that situation or in that circumstance, keep showing up and keep shining your light and stay in your authenticity and don't let your being waver, do not waver then what you're going to do is to teach them and every single onlooker around what does it look like to still show up and to shine your light and to share your gift. And then they have permission to do exactly the same thing. It creates a sense of freedom in other people when we observe people shining their light because we then know that we get to also Think about all the scenarios that, you know, you've had where you've watched somebody do something or say something and you thought, wow, wow, they just, they just did that. Or they just said that I wish I could. And well, if they did that, then maybe I could too. It's, mm -hmm. this, it's contagious and it's how we interact with people and get to that place of a stronger knowing and uh, belief inside of ourselves. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I just want to refer back to the attack, you know, when anybody attacks anybody it's them projecting their own anger it's really truly anger because um attack again is a force it's a verbal force it is um it's an anger that's projected and and it's mm -hmm. just people again they act on their emotions and anger mm -hmm. is an emotion which is the reason why i wrote the book peace the flip side to anger because uh part of um every, war all of it has to do with angry people acting on their emotions, right? They're just not educated, not aware of what they're doing. Yes. And so that's, that's another reason why to shine, shine the light. But if you want to get, um, if you want a copy of my book, you can get it on Amazon. It's called peace, the flip side to anger. And you can also, um, go to my website at corneliastephanie.com and there's anger management tools because mm -hmm. anger right now is going to be playing a huge, uh, factor over the next, couple, three months, we've got, we've got some intense energies that are, that we're mm. coming into and anger is going to be, um, people are going to be really asked to go inside and examine their own inner, their own inner anger and, and what they're feeling like, because it's not happening out there. It's happening on the inside of the physical Absolutely. bodies. And that's why, um, we're positioned, you know, Charlene's work, my work, um, the Transformation Talk Radio Network, which I want to thank everybody on the network, by the way, for doing such a fantastic job and mm -hmm. giving us a yes. platform so we can share our gifts, that we can offer our tools to you because we're positioning ourselves to assist the awakening collective that, yes. hey, you know what? We once used to be angry too, and we once used to be suppressed and shy and withheld and, and withholding. Yes but no more. And that now we're available to assist you to become your true authentic self. Absolutely. And anger, people act out in anger when they feel threatened. And when people feel threatened, it's because they are not living in their authenticity. 
they haven't fully accepted the love and the light and the being inside themselves. And that is why people lash out. And so when you can realize that, like the people that attacked me, I return love back to them. I return, I hold that mirror up and I return it back with consciousness and with love because it's, it's not about me. It has nothing to do with me. And I'm just going to keep shining my light and invite them to do the same. And so I just want to go through Cornelia and I want to recap on what are the seven steps to living on purpose, discover your calling, shine your light, share your gift. It's a lot of taglines. And this is the, this is the, the body of work that I have been working on. I will be um, writing a book about it. I'm in that process. I will also be, um, offering an online program, which I'll be giving more information through my website, charlenehess.com. I am offering uh, two, two people, the first two people that contact me, living whole at charlenehess.com, um, a free one-hour coaching session. So as we wrap up the show, I'm going to go through and talk about what are the seven steps. So step one, stop the noise. Learn how to filter out all of the distractions through meditation and you really important to go inside and meet yourself. Step two, holding space, becoming the observer. Learn how to step outside of the internal chaos and observe without judgment all of your patterns and your thought loops. This is where you get to really sit and be okay with all the things that come up in your mind while you're in meditation. Step three, cultivate a relationship with all of you. So you're going to identify the players in your internal story, look at the monkeys, get to know the monkeys, learn who's running the show, and then make a conscious choice to let all parts of you have a voice. And step four is you get to choose your story, identify what are your limiting beliefs, and process all the stored emotions that are keeping you stuck. That section there is the biggest um, potentially longest taking part of all of the steps of really learning to identify limit what your limiting beliefs are so that you can create and start writing your own story. And then step five, to trust your inner self, to learn to give space to the more quiet part of yourself that's been silenced and to begin to start living from that open, vulnerable place. And then step six is step into alignment. Learn how to bring all aspects of yourself into alignment and to step into your joy because you no longer have internal conflict. And then step seven is to show up, shine your light, embrace that you are your calling. You can share your gifts with the world. The world's been waiting for you to show up and to shine your light and to live in your fullness and give others permission to do the same. So those are the seven steps of discover, living on purpose, discover your calling, shine your light, and share your gift. You can contact me at charlenehess.com, email livingwhole at charlenehess.com, Charlene with two E's together at the end. I really look forward to hearing from any of you. Thank you so much for giving me this uh, platform, Cornelia, to share this awesome work that's been given to me. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you, Charlene. Next week. Come and uh, meet Martin Root, Project Heaven on Earth. I can't wait to introduce you to this amazing project, and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you so much. Thank Be you. Well. Bye-bye.